This is where we start our tale, St George's Farm in June 15, though Ruskin called it Abbeydale. The house sits high, is clearly seen by all new Totley's brick estates, but hides its face between these trees inside a lovely veil of green. Its history hidden too, or too confused to make it out. But here today we bring the people who once trod here back to life. The Sheffield worker and his wife, their hard lives suffered in the dirty town. Or later, writer, walker, activist, who knew the land and hoped to grow, to use their hands to walk and sing, to go with the flow, to find the space to flourish in a kinder place, seize back the earth from those with means, to breathe fresh air and catch their dreams. Now we'll be hushed and take a minute to breathe it in, to seek its spirit. And then, walk on. Follow me. The ramble will be taken wet or fine. Bring a sandwich, a song, and make sure you're on time. I love it here, the air. It makes you glad to be alive. I'm a right Ruskin enthusiast, you know. He likes Sheffield people. They're skill in metal craft. We need to get on. You'll be telling us next about inventing stainless steel, Mr. Brearley. Stainless steel? No such thing. Don't talk daft. Here, <laughs> let me read you this part here. Copied it longhand out of his book called Unto This Last. Look, no wealth but life including all its powers of love, of joy and admiration. Now, isn't that great? Mr. Brilly, you're ever so late. It's 2015. Oh, well, ain't it good sometimes just to look back at where you've been? Well, not when we need to get on. <laughs> and and look, on. here, look, here. Up for today, maybe. No scene continually loved, but one rich by joyful human labour. He talked about honest work, you see, and space for hills and flowers, not stuck in city's filthy grime. Oh, look, look! There's a lot of men's here now. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't mind one of those. Hey, Ruskin had liked it and all, you know. We live to walk and we travel far. Our feet in the heather. At this stop here, St George's Farm, in 1877, still then known as Parker House, John Ruskin has just bought it for Hello. a... Hello! Hello! Have you just come up from Sheffield on the train, have you? <laughs> welcome, welcome. I bet you've come to find out what the Communists are up to. Well, I'm Mrs Malloy, and I'm one of them. Now, have you read that nonsense in the Sheffield Telegraph about women on the farm not, in, not having enough frills and fun? <laughs> well, we're not bothered about such things, are we, Mrs Richardson? <laughs> Ginger beer, love. <laughs> she doesn't half make you dry listening to her, doesn't she? <laughs> She's fresh, just tuppence, but I'm sorry. There's no ale or cider because we suit to temperance. Equality is what we want. We think there's too much us and them. Honest labour, honest life for all. The new Jerusalem. We've got fresh eggs and beans and next month we should have some slashing peas. Must, Mr Ruskin's bought it for us. Parker House it's called with 13 acres. He's bought it to take us out of the city. But we think there's too much interference fuss. He likes to tell us what to do. All that, there is no wealth but life. Well, I haven't seen him short of a bob or two. Hey, he's all right, Mr Ruskin. He got us taught how to make boots, didn't he? You see, he wants to help us leave his usual trades and farm and cobble. 
No sewing machines or, or any machines. He likes things crafted, you know, all handmade. Well, eh? I wouldn't mind a sewing machine. The ramble will be taken wet or fun. Bring a sandwich, a song, and make sure you're on time. Ladies and gentlemen, our next stop, and two years on in 1879, in which Riley meets a strange fellow. William Harrison Riley, Christian socialist and journalist, utopian. Found all these rows depressing. But I took the place with Ruskin's blessing and I named it St George's after his guild. New ones came and joined us, and to tell the truth, it all filled up a bit too a bit too crowded for the dear old house, but unity here and St George is our master. He is intelligence and justice. Good afternoon, Will. Need a hand with your hay? Oh, here comes Carpenter, a Cambridge man. Often comes this way, a clever fellow, one of our converts, though rather posh. Only moved up to live in Sheffield a year or so ago. Good afternoon to you too, Will. Ted, <coughs> I, I'd be glad of your help. I'm digging out a marrow bed, but uh, I'm walking out right now. Care to join us? Of course. Let's uh, let's walk up back. I'd uh, like to talk a bit, and I, I love this old track. You see, this carpenter, though he's a gent, he doesn't mind getting his hands dirty. <laughs> Packed up his holy orders and then became a teacher of working men. Got sent up here to Sheffield. Finds the teaching pretty rough. But he's thrown away his top hat and his dress suit and now he wants to live with a scythe grinder's family, name of Fernihuff. Have you uh, heard from Whitman lately, Riley? No. I've uh, been trying my hand at some poetry too. Oh, really? Could I uh, try the client on you? Certainly. Sunday, a still morning, and all the roads on the outskirts are thronged with people where the streets run wild towards the country, where occasional garden allotments and hedgerows and overhanging trees they go. Pale-faced men and, and girls hardly escape for a, an hour or two from, from breathing the eternal smoke. Lovely. We live to walk and we travel by. Our feet in the heather, our hearts with the stars. At this stop, 35 years on, and it's summer 1914. We have an older carpenter, and we meet some singing ramblers. Friends, meet George Herbert Bridges Ward, oh, yeah. king of the ramblers, <laughs> leader of the first working class walking group in the whole of England, the Clarion Crew. Lives just across the way at Moorwoods Lane. We're uh, just heading home, but to Millthorpe. We've uh, we've not come far, just from the train at Dor and Totley. Better to walk than to to bring the carts. Hmm. Um, meet Mr. E. M. Forster. He's uh, just written a book, Maurice, about what I call homogenic love, and a poet, Siegfried Sassoon. Be sure to hear more of him quite soon. <laughs> but what news, Bert? Oh, you know, trespassing, organising. Uh, <laughs> Arguing and cussing with landowners for a few hours of grouse slaughtering, they'd lock even the saints out of their paradise. That paradise that should be ours. And I mean to do it. Open up the malls for all. Besides, folk from the city that should be free to walk out, walk tall, without a rifle at their backsides. And what's that, that sweet little book Mrs Ward has in her hand? Ah. Could, I, could I see? The Clarion Rambler's Handbook. Our current one for 1914, not bad, though I do say so. <laughs> a rambler maid is a man improved. Look on the front, our motto. Inside, all our walks for the year. Information about place names, always some poetry. Information on old ways. Now, now this hollow way was a pack horse track. Once the main road back from Derbyshire to Sheffield, on which they moved great pigs of lead and sacks of salt, they paved it look with lumps of stone. It's medieval, maybe Roman, you know, yeah? They don't want to hear, Bert, they're tired. Oh, uh, people ought to know, Fanny Lowe. Uh, 
and perhaps they'd like to hear some of my don'ts for ramblers. <laughs> Don't go out with a grunt. Sell your troubles and buy a smile. <laughs> Here's another. Don't leave the girl behind. Make her wear breeches and have the new woman's good legs. <laughs> anyway, we're out to plan our Sunday ramble. You know, it's a good 18 miles with a stop for tea at Lidget. Always a song too. I know you're fond of songs, Edward. Join us, do. My wife will sing you next Sunday's route before we stop for a cup. It'll remind your group of our rules too, so come on, Fanny, sing up. The ramble will be taken wet or fine. Bring a sandwich, a song, and make sure you're on time. We live to walk and we've travelled far. Our feet in the heather, our hearts with the stars. Rycroft, David Lane, Blackamoor, Strawberry Lee, Totley Moss, Flask Edge and Ola Bar. Saltersitch, Green Drive, Barbrook, Ramsley, Smeakley Edge and Horsley Gate. Robin Hood, Pot of Tea, Fanshire Gate and Totley. Return Fair, Eightpence, Hapenny. The ramble will be taken wet or fine. Bring a sandwich, a song and make sure you're on time. We live to walk and we've travelled far Our feet in the heather, our hearts with the stars Our next stop in which Carpenter rests his head and is welcomed by a vision from the future. Such a dream. It's all that writing. <laughs> You're tired, said. Get home to George in Millthorpe. Oh, but beware his naked sunbath, gents. The little girls next door are fond of peeping through the fence. <laughs> the ramble will be taken wet or fine. <laughs> Bring a sandwich, a song, and make sure you're on time. I can't see you, and I can almost see Totley Hall, <laughs> Totley Moss, Houndkirk, Hall of Bar, Blackamoor. But it's not good, they're all planned for villas, and there's no laws to stop them. They'll be building more and more. Oh, do get a grip, bird. Get to 1924, and you'll find you're persuading me to start a new campaigning group. The Sheffield branch of the CPRE. Right, I'm on my way. But which way, Ethel? Now then, Corey, here I am. <laughs> Still a way to go, but you've reached 1931. And we're buying Longshore for the National Trust. No golf course, 
real spoil their fun. No teeing off, no gents in deer stalkers. Just tea at the lodge for thirsty walkers. I still can't find you, Ethel, though I'm on the path. 36, we're trying for a national park. 38, a green belt, the first in the land. 41, Totley, the hall, the field, that wood are all for sale. But 44, the council buys it. We haven't failed to stop suburban struggle. 1951, the Peak Park. Saved for beauty for all us townies getting out into fresh, clean air. Our group's the most successful in the land. Come, you're here. Reach out. Take my hand. So, let's leave Bert and Ethel in 1951 and walk on. We live to walk and we travel far. Back to 1929, although it should really be 1930, I've discovered today, <laughs> St George's Farm, where we meet George Pearson and Sons, nurserymen and market gardeners. Hi, 1930. <laughs> yeah, we bought the farm off the Ruskin's Guild, weren't it, Dad? Started almost 40 years ago with hardly even a cow. We uh, almost lost him last spring, you know. It were a right state when I moved in here. Ruskin's old gardener sat on his ass, getting pissed. Well, we worked hard here, not playing at it like those blooming communists. Ah, but we bought a car this year, didn't we, Dad? Rest your old arthritic hips. <laughs> Took you to see Ruskin's farm at Bewsley, aye, that were a trip. <laughs> aye, Carpenter, my old comrade, put in a word with Ruskin for this farm. Yes, George. Aye, Carpenter, <laughs> called for me just before he died. He were, uh, died just this year, you know. I'm a right old crock, he said. Tell he hadn't got long to go. Nah. Right. Well then, ladies and gents, we'll uh, walk you over to our new place. Heatherfield Nurseries, much more space. There's bedding plants too, and veg for your pot. Um, perhaps a nice cup of tea and cake. <laughs> nice. I worked hard all my life for that part. Now, Dad, shush. Here, take your stick. Take my arm. Right. Come on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, not quite the end, but now take off your boots and find this busy public library here. It's run by local heroes, volunteers. They need your help, so for the library's sake, please buy some lovely summer plants and come inside for chat and tea and cake. But once upon a time here, some remember, a place for flowers, veg and fruit to grow. For here was Pearson's nursery, Heatherfield. The nurseryman himself, a friend to those who loved each field and track and bridle way. Those that greened the city, freed the moors, and talked and walked with us again today. So, while you sit and rest and sip your tea, give thanks and praise to those who won it back. These hills, this good fresh air, for you and me. Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hooray!